Alright. Oh, ooh, ooh. man, my brother's second song just started playing. Jeez, here. Now, if you guys haven't, please go and check out my brother's uh, SoundCloud. He's been making all this music. He just does it because he's always wanted to get into it. And I was like, hey, I, I need some music for my intro of my streams. And he's like, I got it. <laughs> so please go and check out his link in my description for his SoundCloud CNC video. Um, we came up that we came up with that name together as a bunch of brothers. Um, but we have a great amount of history to jump into here today. I'm booting up Crusader Kings 3 because it's going to be the background for what we're going to talk about. Because we're in the year around 10... Oh... 30-something? Some, 1038 or something? When uh, Macbeth comes to the... <clears throat> comes to the Scottish throne. So I, I know you're still seeing the, the splash screen background, so just give it a second here. And we'll jump on over. In fact, I'll just do that right now. Whoop, whoop. There we go. So we are at 648 will be the start of history time here today. But we're going to be using the uh, the start at 1066 because it's going to we're going to go into pretty much all the way up to the point in which the royal standard of Scotland is created. And the one we actually operate under, even using Alba. So we're going to press new game. We're going to jump to 1066 and do any ruler in 1066. In fact, he was right there as a starting option. So let this load in and we'll start talking. In fact, you know what? We'll just press play. It gets rid of that whole annoying thing on the right side there. So what we have here is Scotland, right? We have Scotland right above England. And in uh, when we last left off our history lesson, we were talking about Macbeth's reign, right? How he started and took over um, by removing Duncan. And in, in contrary to what Shakespeare had created in the play, the Scottish play, uh, Macbeth himself, and I, again, I'm sorry if I get struck down by something, Macbeth himself actually um, was not a tyrant. He was a good king. In fact, he had 17 years of relative peace in Scotland. And we just got off the heels about talking about <clears throat> six or seven back-to-back -back Scottish kings who were killed in battle and had very innocuous, very kind of not exciting reigns. They, they came and went very quickly. Now, as things progressed, we have uh, 1054 where... Uh, King Macbeth loses a pretty pivotal war to England, and this destabilizes Scotland. You have a lot of the feudal, well, not feudal yet, so we'll get there. A lot of the lords of Scotland starting to really say, hey, is, is Macbeth really that great? I mean, he was a great time, a great king during a peaceful time, but we still have England at our, at our south. We still don't have Strathclyde under our um, umbrella. We still have Norwegian Vikings to our north, and we still have um, uh, uh, Northumbria not captured by us. And this brings us to Macbeth's end. Macbeth dies in combat in 1057, as you would expect, he dies in combat, right? And he is taken over by Malcolm III, Malcolm Canmore. Or Canmore also means great king, great ruler. And if we jump over here to your start at 1066, you see you start as Malcolm III of Canmore. And this is the beginning of the Dunkled dynasty here. Let's open up the uh, dynasty tree. And you can see that there's very little um, actual stretcher. But interestingly enough, Dunkled actually draws its lineage back to McAlpin. I think it can actually... No, unfortunately you can't, but McAlpin, uh, this is one of the first McAlpin rulers in a long time. So, um, King Malcolm comes to reign and becomes a, a very strong and good ruler because of a lot of things. It's not just simply the fact that uh, he is, oh, that's actually, I didn't know that if you, that's cool, if you click this it shows you all of the, the, um, the dynasties around, that's cool, I did not know that. Jumping back over here, let me press one button over here to take a look at chat in a specific way. There we go. 
So, 1057, well, 1058 is officially when Malcolm III, Canmore, Malcolm Canmore, comes to the throne. And this is a, is a pretty interesting time because we have, over here in 1058, we have Edward the Confessor, who is the precursor to Harold Godwinson, the current king at 1066. And Edward the Confessor has a little bit of a succession crisis, right? He goes and helps out in a war in France, and when he's in that war in France, well, I'm sorry, he gets to a war in France and gets assisted by William the Conqueror. Well, William of Normandy at the time. <clears throat> And he tells William of Normandy, hey, you know what? You helped me. This was pretty solid of you, dude. Let's get a little pound. Let's get like one of those explosion exploded out. And then he says, you can have the throne. When I, when I die, you can have the throne of England. And another individual also had a claim to the throne of England. Harold Hadrada over here in Norway. And then when Edward the Confessor finally passed, well, finally, when he, when he passes on, he gives the crown to Harold Godwinson. So this is a pretty interesting situation, right? Like you don't have, you've got now three kings vying for the English throne. One, the quote unquote legitimate English king, because he was more or less pushed into the throne by um, everyone around Edward the Confessor and less of ever the Confessor directly. And you have got the situation with William, the soon to be conqueror and Harold uh, Hadrada. And Harold Hadrada who has men in Norway, obviously, and Norway has actually, this isn't really necessarily 100% accurate at the time, has Ross and Inverness for the most part. This is still under Norwegian control. And the Norwegians kind of talk with the Scots and say, listen, when we go and invade England and take the throne back, you can have Northumbria. And Malcolm III's like, sweet, I'm, I'm down for that. Let's, let's do it. Let's play some beer pong over it. So... <clears throat> Harold Hadrada lands in England in 1066. I think it actually might be 1065 and 1066 is when William comes. It's it's like a month difference between the two. And I thought it was later. Yeah, it's it's later portions of 1066. In fact, we'll find out by pressing this. Yeah, it was like October was when um, Hastings was. But <clears throat> Harold Hadrada lands and the Battle of Stamford Bridge happens and Harold Hadrada is killed. The famous Varangian king dies. And with that is really supposed to be kind of like the bookmark on the Viking Age. Uh, I'm sorry, bookend on the Viking Age. If it started in 734, it kind of gets bookended in 1066 as far as historians are concerned. Uh, it does continue, right? Um, Vikings still continue to be a very large presence in Northern and Eastern Europe, especially the influence of the Kievan Rus and everything throughout there, and especially, especially their presence in the Byzantine Empire. So, the end of the Viking Age is not the end of the Vikings. It's important to note because the Normans are basically uh, the Vikings of the non-Viking Age. But moving on. William the Conqueror, he gets salty about this situation and he moves from Normandy up into England and he destroys Godwinson at the Battle of Hastings and takes the English crown. So why this is important and why this is... this leads into and this influences Scottish history is because up to this point you have a large presence of Anglo-Saxons right that is what rules over England is Anglo-Saxons well not when the Normans come the Normans now control the English crown and for a handful of years the English or England is Normanized and with that the Anglo-Saxons flee a lot of the old veterans of, of the Battle of Hastings, they, like we were talking about before, they flee over here into uh, Byzantine, or the Byzantine Empire, and they become Varangian Guard in the, um, in the Eastern Roman Empire. A lot of refugees flee north. Oh, oh, I just, I just unpaused the game. <laughs> A lot of... Uh, <laughs> Norman, uh, I'm sorry, Anglo-Saxon refugees flee north into Scotland. Uh, uh, Malcolm Canmore, though, kind of looks at this and goes, we can, we can kind of take advantage of this. So 1067 hits, and with the Normans comes feudalism, 
in all of its shapes and sizes. The Anglo-Saxons had really kind of lived on somewhat of an island, quite literally, but also metaphorically. They had removed themselves from a lot of the dealings of the Western uh, Europe when it came to feudalism throughout um, all of the Holy Roman Empire, France, and especially Italy. But this feudalism spreads throughout England and then eventually makes its way into Scotland. And Malcolm III, Canmore, adopts feudalism. But why this is important is that up to this point, Tanistry elective, all of the Celtic warlords, or Celtic lords, I guess, had really kind of had a huge sway on everything. Feudalism kind of reduces their power a little bit. So Canmore was intelligent enough to know that you can't just simply supplant a centuries-old tradition uh, that has deeply rooted in Scottish society by just saying, oh, feudalism is here. So feudalism was a slow kind of trickling into the culture. And with that, Scotland uh, gains a new queen. Um, as the Anglo-Saxons are fleeing north, a, and a woman, Margaret of Wessex, flees north as well. And Malcolm takes her, her as his second wife. And she does a lot to really help strengthen the Catholic ties throughout Scotland, building monasteries and helping to really kind of connect Scotland with Rome. This as a whole, let me get some water. My throat's dry. Hold, please. This kind of creates a pretty good situation here. So this is that happens around 1070. And for three years, this kind of goes on. Raiding, refugees, so on and so forth. But in 1073... Um, <clears throat> Sorry, uh, seven some odd years after the uh, William the Conqueror lands in England, William the Conqueror decides to go take over Scotland. And as he, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. As she moves, uh, as he moves north into Scotland, uh, Canmore says, "Oh, oh, oh! I didn't, I didn't expect you. Well, allow me to pay homage to you and and acknowledge you as King of England." And this is a theme that we've gotten before. Uh, Malcolm III, and we will get after the Malcolm Malcolm III. Basically, this is done to appease the invading army. And um, tweed, a tweed jacket. Donate to his tweed jacket fund. <laughs> Thank you very much, nice. Surreal Beliefs. Guys, please, I, I'm topping history time real quick to tell you to go check out Surreal Beliefs. He has an amazing YouTube channel filled with Crusader Kings, Banner Lord, Assassin's Creed. I think, ow, right now he's playing Kingdom Come Deliverance on Twitch. Um, he has a wide repertoire of feet pictures too with little tiny um, rings on the big toe. So you can see those all on Surreal Beliefs YouTube channel. Go check it out. So, Billy the Conk heads up north to Scotland and pretty much says like, hey, bend the knee. And Canmore does so. And this is just simply to buy him time to rally his troops. And this is what he does. He does say, hey, yeah, no, you're, you're the king. Two days later, basically, he immediately starts campaigns of war against England. It's, it's more like months. And this really leads to 20 years of conflict between Scotland and England across William I, William the Conqueror, and his son, William II, Willie II. And this is... This is great because it kind of creates a uh, a stalemate. In 1093, Malcolm III Canmore and his son both die at the Battle of Alnwick. There it is. It was important later. Uh, Battle of Alnwick. And with that, there is no set succession for the King of Scotland. But it's important because, like I said, this creates a stalemate. England could never get enough of a foothold in Scotland, but Scotland could never fully repel England, enough that both of them just parted their ways, ended the aggression, and just stopped. And with this, you have all this, all these Anglo-Saxon um, refugees heading north, and all of the Norman influence, which is now coming in heavily from France, you get this Anglo-Norman language and influence that really starts to seep in, especially to the lowlands of Scotland. And someone who is Scot Scottish or of uh, uh, from England and knows more than me, this, I believe, is considered the lowlands. This region right here. I guess you could go a little bit further south. And this is considered the highlands. 
and I don't 100% know. Um, but it's pretty much everything south of that one. There's a, there's a really famous mountain over here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know ge geography. I, I like history. But the lowlands become very heavily Anglo-Normanized, and we're going to get into that a little bit more. So when Malcolm passes or dies in combat, because he dies at that battle, like many other kings before him, Donald III, the White, his brother, takes over. And it's actually kind of supposed that his brother took the throne and it was not the, he was not the intended ruler of uh or uh, intended heir of Malcolm and this leads to a lot of uh conflict because Malcolm had three sons and those three sons each one of them has an Anglo-Norman style name uh lowlands are the central belt around Glasgow or Glasgow and Edinburgh then the highlands of the north and the border hills to the south all right, thank you very much, Ben Nevis. There it is. That's the that is the the uh, name of the mountain I was thinking of. That's extremely haunted. Thank you, Cropper. Um, but again, Edgar, Alexander, and David are the names of Malcolm's son. Um, sons. Edgar. I want to say, I want to say Edgar is his son is his son from his first wife, and Alexander and David are the sons of his second wife. The second wife being Margaret. Margaret passes away simply days after Malcolm Malcolm dies. And those um Malcolm had quite a few sons, six to seven. Ooh, well, consider me corrected. Uh Margaret herself actually becomes canonized as a saint. And as Mandead said in chat, she is the only Scottish saint. So that's a kind of a cool little factoid for you because of her explicit um growth of it's not Scotland. Uh, her growth of Catholicism in Scotland. Just like we get over here with the growth of Orthodox Christianity and becoming the, uh, the I believe it's um, I, Ivan the, uh, I'm going to say Ivan the Great's wife, Olga, Olga the Saint. Yeah, Olga the Saint, who becomes the saint in uh, uh, Kievan Rus because of her willingness her, to grow um, Orthodox Christianity over there. Now, getting back to the land of the Scots, uh, this leads to a lot of succession issues, right? So, 1093, Malcolm III dies. And then Donald takes over. Then 1094, uh, Malcolm takes over, who is Malcolm, one of Malcolm's sons takes over. And then that lasts for three years. And then Edgar, Malcolm's son with Margaret, takes over. So, it's just like a, a layer cake of bullshit for like five, six years. Until eventually, um, Edgar abdicates the throne to Alexander. And Alexander takes over as ruler of Scotland, but assigns his brother, uh, David, to ruler of Strathclyde. And he reigns for, I, I want to say, let me look at my notes over here. Um, Alexander is not a warlike king. Whereas David, soon to be, will be a warlike king. But 1124... Alexander dies, and with that, David takes over as king of all of Strathclyde and Scotland. And this begins the reign of David I, arguably one of the best kings of Scotland, especially medieval Scotland. And it's called the Davidian Revolution because um, he does a lot to very, very much Normanize. And I, I'm using the word Normanize here, not Anglo-Normanize, because he had a really good relationship with the Norman crown. And he had a very strong relationship with all of, with Henry the first. Now, this Normanization, because they, they kind of looked at him as, they looked at David as this, like, oh, you're the, you're like a king of barbarians, you know? You're, you're a pretty good guy. But those other people that you rule, not so, not so good again, not so good guys. <laughs> um, but as this kind of grows out, as David the first really takes in the rulership of Scotland, he does a ton. Remember, I was talking about those Celtic lords. They really do have this overarching power and and strength over Scotland, right? If anything, really, they're kind of like the best way to compare them is these guys are basically like the Praetorian Guard of Rome. If the king really starts to get hog wild and and, and just out of bounds, the Celtic lords will overthrow him and put a puppet king in place or a different king that just hey this is a pretender and it fits our it fits our role a little bit better sorry um 
So, what he did was, what David I did, again, clever just like Canmore, he created a lot of feudal offices that not necessarily cheated the power of the Celtic lords, but it helped reduce their overall strength by saying, hey, yeah, you know, you might be the lord of this place, but I've got this feudal officer that now rules over this portion or is in charge of these things. And with it, he created boroughs. And these boroughs, or B-U-R-G-H-S, um, for the most part, if I, actually, if I think if I press this, um, for the most part, like, Edinburgh is a borough. Um, Dunbar is a borough. And these boroughs are, are very special because they, they are officially established borders. They're not just simply, hey, this is a village around a monastery. Nope, it's an officially uh, set border by the crown with royal privileges. So if you were given lordship over a borough, you had a lot of power. And you had two different types of boroughs. You had boroughs with castles and you had boroughs without castles. You didn't, didn't have to have a castle there like we typically see here in Crusader Kings. But this was a way to really kind of unify the lowlands. And then this did express itself northward into the highlands and tried to get some control going there. But of course, that is notoriously hard to control, especially when half of the highlands are still controlled by Norwegians at this point. There's still a large presence of them in the north. Uh, Moray is, <clears throat> for the most part, this is pretty accurate now at this point, since we're at uh, 1124. Uh, this is still pretty much, um, or this is pretty accurate to uh, like Scottish ownership, but you still do have a lot of the uh, the outer Heber Hebrides and inner Hebrides, which are still, for the most part, very uh, Norse. <clears throat> I think it stays like that for like another like 100 years or so. I can't remember. But these boroughs essentially become these centers of trade and commerce. And because there is such a high propensity of Normans and Anglo-Saxon refugees in these locations, Middle English becomes the official language of this portion of Scotland. And it's very interesting because uh, it, we always kind of look at, <clears throat> okay, the Scottish and the English and, and the, they have this feud between one another. And this is what I always talk about when it comes to taking a look at the world through the lens of history and understanding that every single people is connected through some strain, some thread. Um, Scotland is only Scotland in name. Scotland is, at this point in history, was originally Celtic, right? We talked about the uh, the Kurgan um, kind of Indo-European exodus over here and how that eventually becomes the Celts and how the Celts become the Picts, the Picts become the Scotty, the Scotty become the Scottish, and then the Scottish now have a huge influx of Anglo-Saxon and Norman refugees, which intermix very heavily with Scottish people. You have Norwegians controlling the northern portion of Scotland. So, and you also have the western portion of Scotland heavily influenced uh, uh, from the Dalrida, which was the uh, the Irish people at the time too. So to say that you are Scottish, you also have to understand that you are a part of a huge, huge sum of a lot of different cultures. Just like when we were talking about with Russia, right? If you're Russian, well, then you have Norwegian and Swedish blood in you. You have got Pechenegg blood in you from the uh, steppe warriors of uh, the Khazaria. You have Eastern Slavic group, group blood in you. Myself, I'm Italian, right? I derive a lot of a, a lot of identity from being Italian. Well, I also have got Norman ancestry attached to my Southern Italian roots. Northern African ancestry intermixed in there. You have got Holy Roman Roman Empire and essentially the German rulership of the Norman kingdoms throughout the, the later Middle Middle Ages. And then you have Eastern, well, you have just Greek, not Eastern, not Eastern uh, uh, Roman Empire influence. You've got <clears throat> Greek blood in you. So when you try to look at yourself and you look at your culture and you look at your heritage, realize you are a smattering of a bunch of different cultures that have claimed right over your land for hundreds and thousands of years. So it's just important to kind of get a good frame of reference because national pride is very strong and cultural pride is very strong. But to realize where you come from in the grand scope of history is even stronger. And it, real, it makes you realize how connected we as humans are, but more importantly, how social humans are and they need each other. There's just always this weird segregative 
uh, uh, inclination to want to like say, oh, I am this person this, and this is superior. But it's not. Back, back on track. So Middle English, i got to get back to my notes. I was on a rampage over there. And uh, again, with David, we have a huge Dutch all the way down on all the records. Well, yeah, man, I'm I'm Italian all the way down on all the records, but Italian also, like I was saying, is a smattering of a bunch of different set stuff. My my grandparents were immigrants. Yes, I am only second generation. Um. So again, we have this huge increase in church and feudal influence throughout Scotland as a a chance to try and normanize. This is all created uh, from David I, who had a very good relationship with Henry I, who is now the ruler of England. Well, essentially, Henry I dies, and there is a large succession issue, a civil war that pops up in England called the Anarchy that lasts from 1035 to 11, I'm sorry, 1135 to 1153. And this is huge, because you've got Henry II on one end, and you've got Margaret... Marjorie, his sister, I can't remember, his sister, they're, they're, they're feuding. It's a feud. It's a, it's a civil feud. <laughs> um, and this leads to a lot of aggression into England. And this creates the 1138 uh, situation that allows David I to take out a chunk of Northumbria. And in fact, I think that this is pretty indicative of what he takes. He takes a large swath of Northumbria and claims it as his home. Matilda, thank you very much. Thank you very much, man dead. And <laughs> let me get the name of this. <laughs> David the First Battle of Battle of Fallujah. Wrong guy. It's important, or else I wouldn't bring it up. Oh, Standard, that's an S. I'm dumb, I thought it was an F. Yeah, so it's the Battle of the Standard, in which case, um, Scott, the Scotland brings 20,000 men to the table and loses 11,000 of them. And it's, it is a huge defeat for Scotland. But they still end up essentially getting the positive end of that stick when they sign the treaty that ends that war. Um, David I is considered the Prince of Cumbria, and he is given the lands that he has um, uh, received in Northumbria. Now, why it's so important to, to look at the, 12, the 20,000 to 11,000 ratio, like losing that many soldiers... In medieval combat, there is this notion that, you know, it was a battle royale and 50,000 men were on the field that day and 14 made it out. It's not true. <laughs> um, for the most part, uh, the, the, a medieval army consisted of various soldiers that were, I don't want to say militia because it's not necessarily 100% correct, but they were various freemen. Uh, individuals that uh, tilled the land or uh, masons or, or artisans, so on and so forth, that just kind of had normal day jobs and they were summoned into war and they came to war. And then you had actual men at arms. These were individuals that were controlled by the aristocracy and they were supplied, but the, they supplied their own armor, but they were at least trained and assisted by the aristocracy in some way, shape or form. And I say aristocracy to say any type of knight, lord, baron, anyone of any kind of ruling class in this case, not an actual upper crust society. Um, and then you also have got mercenaries. So these were the three things that consist, the three kind of subgroups of a medieval battlefield. And when a medieval battlefield kind of, uh, when the soldiers met, you have formations that would charge each other. Levies. Levies is a very good point. Thank you, Jerry, Jerry Rigged. I couldn't think of that word. And when these formations charge, if they got like 30% casualties, more often than not, they would flee. Uh, history has shown us that these we didn't have these huge sweeping wars where uh, one million men fought one million men and, and, and one side lost everything. It was typically that 
a unit would route way before it released it, it got to critical mass if a unit of 100 soldiers charged downfield and 15 of their friends died more often than not like i said because there's no real professional standing army in a lot of western europe it's a lot of feudal lords with levies is a great example with men at arms with mercenaries there's not 100 dedication to the quote-unquote cause and it would cause these units to flee once they released they they got a certain number of damage done to them that's why morale plays such a big point part in uh games but not even a big enough point to be historically accurate neither here nor there but my point still remains is that eleven thousand soldiers died meaning they were pretty gung-ho on trying to win that fight so as we move on the, the treaty granted the lands to David I, and David I eventually um, sees the the Henry II come to the full power of King of England. The treaty is signed in 1153 that ends the anarchy, and Henry II of Anjou begins a pretty terrifying massive English empire called the An Angevin? Angevu? Angevin? A-N-G-E-V-I-N -E Empire. And this is the kind of the reign of the Merengia or Vrangian. Nope, not, it's not Vrangian. <sighs> he is a what king? king? Not a Vrangian king. It's the guy in uh it's the guy in the Matrix. <laughs> Merovingian king. Merovingian kings. This kind of uh, starts the beginning of the Merovingian kings. Um, you're telling me history isn't like the Battle of Pelennor Fields. <laughs> Angevin Empire, which basically is England, all of France, includes uh, Brittany here, and a good portion of southern uh, Ireland. In a term of convenience, though, they never called it an empire and it had no emperor, of course. Yeah, it, it didn't. It was just a massive swath of rulership under one guy. I thought, uh, isn't Richard II, a Mer or I'm sorry, isn't Richard the Lionheart a Merovingian king? I'm not thinking of that. I'm thinking of a different term, aren't I? I thought he was... But he was like one of the last Merovingian <clears throat> I guess I'm just thinking about Angevin. I don't know where Merovingian came from. That's right. The Merovingians ruled before the Capetians. Man, I don't know why I thought Merovingian. Maybe it's just Angevin, and I just kind of got my brain all, all uh, crowded up. Um, either way, um, this kind of leads into David passing on, Malcolm IV taking over. Malcolm IV was a very sickly king and didn't really do a whole ton. And eventually he dies and William the Lion takes over in 1165. William the Lion's standard is this little guy right here. So the royal standard of Scotland is William the Lion's standard. And in 1174, he is captured because he, for some reason, charged a much larger English force than his because he was just caught. Um, like he, him and his personal bodyguard of like 60 men were out camping in between armies. <clears throat> and they got a, uh, ambushed, essentially, by a group of like a several hundred Englishmen. And so they decided to charge them. And they lost, handedly. And they sent um, William the Lion over here into Normandy because they didn't want him to get broken out by any uh, Scottish um, agents or any armies trying to crack him out of uh, prison. And eventually what happens here is that in order to ransom him back, they demand supplication. And William II bows to another lion in Richard the Lionhearted. So that's where we'll be ending this history lesson here today with William the lion bowing to Richard the lion hearted. And it's important to note with Richard the lion heart, he is a very French king. He is of course the king of England and, 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 and Angevin and everything like that. But, um, this, he barely speaks English from what I remember and have read. And I could be easily 
uh, um, uh, corrected on this, but Richard the Lionheart takes over, and he his interests aren't so much in the the English heartland. His interests are more abroad with the Crusades. But that will end our history lesson here for today as we jump forward and back into Crusader Kings three. But it was a four. That was a big history lesson, guys. Forty one minutes here today. So let's load on up and let's get on into it. We're still here with our first ruler. How wet and wild is that, my bros? Hey. Let us do the do. Plantagenet! Plantagenet! That's the word! Thank you, Khalil! That is the word! Plantagenet! Oh, yes. Richard II was a pan... Or, I'm sorry. Uh, Henry II was a pan... Or Plantagenet uh, king. And so was Richard the Lionheart. That was... Thank you very much. Oh, I, that was really frustrating me. That was really frustrating me. <laughs> I was like, I'm not stupid. What is it? They definitely were. And a lot of people kind of give, uh, you know, it's kind of a common misconception, right? Like, France, uh, just a bunch of cowards. F France was, in all honesty, France was the pinnacle, or, I'm sorry, as far as military bravery goes, France has been kicking ass since, you know, the Romans, right? The Romans remarked how impressive and how courageous the Gauls were, the Gaelics. And... This, this progresses into the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages, the High Middle Ages, the Renaissance. Uh, France was the premier force in the world. And this progresses all the way up even into um, pre-Napoleon. It was France and Prussia as really that pinnacle. And even after that, in World War I, the Germans remarked, how much scarier it was to fight French troops than British troops or any of the other troops for that matter. France, for the most part, really only got its bad rap in World War II. And that was because the uh, French, it was a French king or president at the time. I can't remember. He was not a warrior. He was not anyone, a general of any kind of way, shape or form. And France was betrayed by a World War I veteran to the Germans. France, for the most part, has a really, really, really amazing history when it comes to military conquest and, or at least just military ability. French knights were the best knights. We have a country in the, in the United States because of France. So anytime when people always kind of get like, oh, you know, the French, you know, just a bunch of lily liver, blah, 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 blah. Like, mm, nah, mm, 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 mm. Very true. Like it's it's not. I'm I'm using a little some sweeping generalizations to make my point, but very true, man. Dead. Okay, so we have quite a bit of land here.
Very few champions? What? Why? The vassal, well, I could allow him. We really want that guy to fight. Can I get some more champions? No. Yeah, look at that bishop, right? Girthed out. I can give him a wife. I can give him a super wife. Oh! Clementia. <laughs> I mean, I could have him make giant geniuses. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, actually. I don't like that. Damn. Because I don't really have any... Like, this kid's too... I'm not going to have this kid marry a 29-year-old woman. Constantine McMathier here. Oh man, she got all the Elspeth. Lady Elspeth. Yes. Timber player. Correct. I mean, I don't know. I don't I kinda don't want her to go to waste. Or, I mean, I could, well, I could take concubines. Or I could allow him to take concubines, but... <sighs> Dude, <laughs> well, what's funny about it is, his name is... I'm sure it's like Imshad, right? But it's... It's I'm Chad. It's it's Archbishop I'm Chad the Giant. <laughs> right? Like 100%. You can't look at that the way it's supposed to look at, but you can't look at it anyway. Yeah, let's do that. This looks fun. Dude, like, look at this guy. Can't he... I'm, I'm Chad's gonna get married. No, I didn't name him that. Andrew, that's 100% the game. In fact, let me get a let me get a picture of I'm Chad over here. I'll put that on the Reddit. Well, you know what, Guinness? Sometimes sometimes those people are the best when it comes to <laughs> spiritual matters. God, don't talk about Last Kingdom. I can't wait for season 5. Oh, oh, what's going on over here? This is Mercy and Claim on the Earldom of Cambridgeshire. Yes, Night Manager is a mod, Drew. All my mods you can find it in the description, my bros. So what do we do now? Upland over here has gotten pretty pretty sweaty. I don't know, man dead. I don't think I'll ever recover. <laughs> um I can attack Yuland here. We, we just got our foothold here into Ireland, which is nice, because we got Oriel, Oriel, and this will allow us to get, this now gives us, pressing all the buttons but the right button, this holy site. So now we have, what? Yeah, no, we do, we do, there it is. Yeah, Ulster's a good call, because Ulster would kind of, um, it gives us 
This way we have like a connection to our lands, right? Right here. Nobody doesn't marry Karen. We have the Isle of Man down here too. Yeah, don't no no spoilers, no spoilers. Even though there's there's it's a predominantly male cast, let's not uh I don't wanna oh there's your armies are raised? Why? Where are my armies? Oh, that's right, we're helping out in this crap. Ugh. Alright, well let's unpause. Oh, I'm glad you accept your marriage proposal. You're damn right you do. Alright. You know, go to destruction streams. So, of sun. Where's this? Okay, that's over there. That is. And Alplin's getting fat. That's kind of a little bit of a worry because I can't take Strathclyde because of that. This one needs to kind of complete itself here. Prince Anward was one against Petty King. Richard of Cornwall in the winning claim of the Lordship of Sir blah 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 blah. So we've contributed to this. I'm not going to throw more soldiers at you. I gave you a thousand. This guy's got nothing. Go throw your army against him. There we go, there we go. Get a move on it. Okay, I guess we're doing that, huh? Hey, David B., thank you very much, man. Oh, what the hell? I expect Edwig would be keenly interested in the information I've acquired indicating his brother, Wolfier. Perhaps he would even be interested enough to offer me something substantial in exchange. You have to consolidate your Northwest Territories? Uh, what's, what Northwest Territories? What do you mean? Gain. Learn. Okay. He pays nothing to me. And he learns of a heritage secret. Who is this guy? Just a dude. Who's this guy? Just a dude. I hoard these secrets. <laughs> he's gonna pay nothing to me because he's broke. But I might as well get a weak hook on him. Ignore my offer. If I keep snooping around, I may be able to arrange more deals. Okay. I mean, cool. Are you ailing, ailing yet? Or like the real ailing? I do this? I didn't think so. Unfortunately, this is like stalled the war. Ian Bruce, what's up, man? David, thank you very much again, though, for uh, for becoming a member of the channel. 
It does help me out a ton. Like I've said before, guys, you get access to these really cool custom emojis. Got a new uh, kiss love one in there at the very end. But it, it does pretty much... It's What it's doing is like a thing like, hey, here's dependable income every month. Uh, worry less about making content and like a volume of content. Worry more about making quality content. So thank you very, very much, David. Really helps me out. And to all of the other members of the channel. Okay, can we go like actually do something? Oh. One, this is the probably the one thing I hate about alliances is you can't leave them. Like, I'm sorry, not leave the alliance, but you can't. <clears throat> yeah, just 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 ban it. You can't. Uh, I can't leave this war. Like, the AI can do. The AI can leave your wars, no problem. I'm like, what the fuck? Please go and attack. Here, let me save here and see if this does something. I'm gonna try and pull him into the fight. Maybe not the player error. Oh, he mar Oh, good, good job, son. Wait. Okay. And she's pregnant. Good. I. Uh, I fried chickens. I haven't gone through any. This guy is infirm and melancholic, and he's yet to die. Yeah, I mean, I guess I gotta do this because the AI isn't doing anything. Well, I'm glad I could help you out, David. It's a tricky game, but once you kind of get the hang of it, it does. Uh, it's a great game. Could you please now enforce this? All right, gets a tough soldier and an unyielding defender. Good job, Rune. Actually, I don't know, Tom. Please, please de enforce the demands. Oh my god. Thank you. Oh. Now I can get back to my own conquest. So. This is with Upland. No, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of this. And I even declare war on her though. Hunker. Duchy. Why does this cost piety? Oh, because she's the same faith. What's up, Kakalova? My heir's gonna be sick if I ever take him over. <laughs> he's twenty-seven, and he's he got a he got a pretty wife, which is a, a, like a second wife, which is good.
Oh, good. Got a lot of... Jesus, what's going on over here? People in prison and everything over here. Guy's about to die in prison. Yeah, seriously, that's what I'm worried about. <clears throat> What's the problem here? not like me enough. Burn him! What's up, Sheldon? It's too bad, because that's, that's some nice money I'd like to get. I could just kill her, you know? I'm starting to get crazy in my old age. See, I don't want to attempt suicide, because I will lose a whole level here. Uh, so we're significant. That's pretty huge. So we'll go from well significant to well known. Well, it's too bad because I want Ulster. I just don't have the. We're definitely going to take Ireland and Wales, but only not really sure. Oh, we, I want to take Ulster now, but we can't. And I don't have, I don't have the the goods to do so. I could offer to join the war. I can't really build much of anything because this is a feudal location, and I am not a feudal lord. Uh, Saint Johnston, I think I can though. Yeah, I can construct palisades here, war camps, everything. Dangerous faction. Let it kick off. See what happens. That's a good champion right there. Nice. How's this going then? Insular's going really well. Got a nice, good kind of spreading on it. Three years, three years, three years. Four years, three years. Let's just keep going to the heartland down here. Yeah, we'll do Dunbar. Culture is almost done converting. Almost increased, done increasing county control. We're in a good spot. I just, I would like for my son to take over.
Hmm. I mean, I could lead the army. It just always feels gamey to do that. I don't know why I don't like it very much. Could just conquer this duchy. Uh, Galve with someone? This, that, this? Upland is a pretty sizable force. Oh, they're in a fight over here, though, huh? Mm, but they're but they're part of the allies in that fight. Yeah, y'all dag of uh, Upland. Subjugation war. That's gonna grow them. Whew. That's gonna make them huge. Yeah, I know. Actually, it would be very historically accurate, right, Guinness? Because we talked about how much of them die in the battle. All right, well, we can do that. Let's we'll start taking out these uh, these little guys. See, I would love to just go, you know, declare war on this dude. Conquer this. But you see what happens. Look at 7,000. I mean... Our military strength is similar, so it would just be a protracted fight. I, I might be able to blitz it and win, but there's also, a, since they have such a huge force, even if I take the war target, they'll still send an army and I have to defeat the army. I don't know, Ian. I don't know if... Let's see. Well, Nuestria is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I don't know if it will historically create William the Conqueror or not. I mean, we're, we're still a ways away. We need 77 for Britannia. Or 73, sorry. We own 35. We need to get two kingdom titles, too. Mercia is getting chunked apart, too. That could be a pretty... I mean, this could be a nice... Invasion. But... I could try to take the petty kingdom of Mercia. No, stop. And look at that. That would be huge. And that's easily doable. Easily doable. He has a very, very inferior army. But that puts me right up against Wessex. Um, we could do this. What duchies are available? Principality of Gwynedd. So it's either Mercia. Wessex is still pretty beefy. 5,000 on their own. Who are they fighting? Zutfen? Zutfen. Hmm. It's heading with Saxon noises. Uh, let me pee real quick, guys. I've had so much liquid today. Give me one sec.
Okay. Yeah, we can smash out East... I mean, East Anglia is bigger even than Mercia. What the hell is this little piece of shit? Ugh. I hate these little crap-ass... Oh, look, we got that. <laughs> I mean, they actually have a pretty sizable little force here. Yuland is better than fighting Upland, to be honest. I mean, I could just make them my target and smash them out. But the problem is, what makes Ireland such a slog is... Look at this. Look at this land. These are all duchies. Connacht, Munster. Like, there's three duchies in this in this location. But. One, two, three. I mean, that's the three largest ones. Can't I just invade your stupid kingdom? Oh, it's over here too. That's the other one. Denmark. Well, not really. Kind of. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to talk about my poor geography lately. <laughs> Like the other day when I was like, yeah, uh, Poland. <laughs> I was like over here looking for Poland. And I was like, this is, and I, even looking at it, I was like, this is not Poland. This is not Poland. And some guy goes, yeah, Poland's in greater Poland right there. <laughs> yeah, to invade a kingdom, it's 2,000 prestige. Because you're supposed to use it on like a large target. But, like, the problem is there's just, like, so few. Oh, my eyes. So, if I got one, two, three, four. Like, again, that that's the problem is. Okay, so if I declare war here on the Duchy of Connacht, it's just this. Munster is these two. And then I'm immediately going to have to have a peace treaty and I won't be able to declare war on them. Yeah, I'll have an advantage. It's just annoying to deal with. Because then they'll go and attack me here at Lothian. So I'll have to take these two. Ride all the way back to Lothian. Yeah, but Upland too. Even when it comes to those wars. If you attack these locations. I mean, we can do it here. Let's, let's, guys, I'm all about experimenting, right? I'll put anything in my mouth twice. So let's do that. Let's, let's do the little war with... Uh, Daniel, you son of a bitch. We're gonna do it. We've already done it. Crazy bastard. Here, we'll declare war. Do it on the county. Do it for this county in specific. We've declared war here. Do that. But even if we do raise all of our armies. And we go smash this out very quickly. And again, I'm just making a point, so we'll probably uh, roll this save back. Yeah, I, I, sure. Uh... I'm just, I'm just doing this to, so see, even though we captured the war target, they, they're still alive, <laughs> and now we have this massive force, so this was just to make a point, like, even these smaller things, like, sure, they can send these small forces, and they'll be, dis they'll have to disembark, and they won't be, um, at full strength, it's still a kind of a pain in the ass. Let's roll this back. Because that was only 27%. I now have to go there and capture territory or fend off wave after wave after wave after wave of Viking. 
And I'm fine with doing that, but I don't want to do that right now. Yeah, so what I'm thinking is we'll grab... We can do all of Mercia right now. And we'd win. We'd win like hands down. And we would take a huge chunk. In fact, even if I did this, this so check this out. Conquer Duchy. Remember, there, there's, a, there's a war going on right there. Oh, it's part of that. Damn it. Yeah, we can catch him disembarking. It's just kind of a prolonged situation that I don't want to quite deal with yet. We will deal with it, because we will have to deal with it. But we could get Mercy out, and maybe try and create a alliance here. We could just do Mercia and then East Anglia. Fight the Friar. Let's see. Do they have any claims, though, on any Mercian territory? Because that will be important. Because if they do, they'll just get... We'll just get in a war with Wessex. We don't really want to deal with war with Wessex right now. Mm, east. Hmm. Well, that won't be in the territory we're going to grab. Duchy. Okay, let me look at the duchies. Shift Q. Okay. So we're, yeah, that won't be in our territory. So that's actually good. We're going to only be taking this. And this will maintain as Mercia. And that'll maintain as Mercia. And they might actually just die. And of course, there's this. We go for Connacht. Yeah, we might as well take Mercia now while it's a, while it's unified under one target, versus if I take that, that'll give me that and that. of the Sheffield here. The Otis. You will go to Warwickshire. You will go to Derby? No, we don't need that. It's not part of the part. It's not part of the part. Yeah, these two. We'll get the Heartland. Alright, Ian Bruce. Guys, do make sure you're liking the stream. It, Like I've always say, okay, like I always say, it helps me out a ton. Corb converted culture from Gaelic to Anglo-Saxon. Why would you do that? We're a land of Scots. Thank you very much. Well, that's probably why. <laughs> There's not a large presence of Scots. See Scott? See a Scott? Good. Good. We need to make more Scottish vassals. That's what that tells me. Hey, save HK. What's up, man? This is Crusader Kings 3. 
So Tom Shepard's Shepard, yeah, Shepard's. The reason they they muster in two stacks is because of the button I'm pressing. Oh, look at this. Get in there. Uh, the button I'm pressing, and I'm a tribal faction, so it'll split them to make sure that their supply is maintained. Otherwise, if they go to these locations, their supply won't be maintained and they'll take casualties after they're mustered. Our champion, Sigbjorn, hard, ripped the head off of Reeve. Our champion, Ulfir, ripped the head off of Sven and became a berserker. Oh, What's up, Kyle G? That guy is, that, those guys got asses kicked. Okay, so let's do some carpet sieging here. Not to be confused with carpet munching. A whole different pastime, indeed. Whoa, 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 I did not do that. What is this? Enemy army, okay. Not yet, Ian. Not yet. Oh, it's nothing to do with tribal, it's just the way they, they did that. We're going to actually station besiegers here and chase this army. So... Uh, what kind of army do we need here? 400? Okay. This second army will receive the uninvolved. Okay. That should be good. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, if he's a murderer... I, see, the problem is, I don't want him to force himself on the council, which he will do. But, I mean, if he forces himself on the council and removes my son, that's not a terrible thing. But the problem is that they won't... If he forces himself on the council, though, and says he wants to be one of these guys, that could be an issue. I'll decline it, and we get the murderer secret, which isn't great. But this character's on his way out. I don't think I really care, right? Because he's exposing that I murdered High Chieftain Ivar. Thank you, High Chieftain Aid, for screwing up his spy master. Replace you right here, right now. In a war? <gasps> Uh-oh. He joined that war, huh? Interesting. But what do you guys think? Do we accept this and give him a weak hook? Or do we decline it and expose our murder secret? Well, Brett, if if he uh, if he forces himself on the council, he modifies his feudal contract to do so. Well, 
What can they do with a weak hook? They can modify their feudal contract. So he can go like this. I guess I can't do it from this. Uh, he can go to... Oh. Yeah, declining looks better, to be honest, too. I agree with you, Ibark. Let's do it. I mean, he's he's not going to die in battle. He's a really good lord. Expose it. Gain the trait, murderer. You gain the trait, murderer. You spent 100. Oh, didn't know that. You gain 15 dread. You lost opinion of Chieftain Durker. All close family members and spouse of Chieftain Ivar lose. Okay, that not Leo effect. This required to be on the council, Guinness. Uh, Ian, they can modify any one value that they want to use that hook to. So, in fact, they're, all these guys are tribal for the most part, so it won't really. I just realized that he's tribal, so it won't matter. So, here's an example. He can make it so that. He has force partition. Oh well, he wouldn't want to do that. He's got sanctioned war declaration, or he gets um, protected title revocation, or council rights. So you can do that kind of stuff with it, and make it so they they can never have their title revoked. They're always a duke. Oh, it has happened. Pause. How do I pause? Pause. Jesus Christ. Pause. Okay, let's take a look. We got a lot to do. Manage these domains. Chancellor. We need a new chancellor. We have to do everything? I, I'm su This doesn't all carry over? Alright. We got, we got quite the task ahead of us. I have passed on, and in in my stead, my son shall take over. Oh, that guy does not like me. Oof, no one likes me. Okay. We have... We... There, we got this. Kill it. it. And you just... Uh... Kill it. 30... 30 dread. People fear me. People fear me. We have a lot to deal with here. Lostly imprisoned Maud. Is she? That's not worth it. First in line to inherit more A, huh? Okay, so we can swap around a lot of this stuff. He was the he was on what is he? Duty focus? Well he's probably gonna be good. 34, 46. Like yeah, this guy is Earl Bjorn is really good. But I can put him on and I won't have to deal with anything because I do have too many duchies too, don't I? Yeah, I I, cause I inherited the Isles Duchy. Okay, we can we can change a lot of this around. We'll be able to stabilize this pretty quick. Oh, S man, I I hear you, brother. But I'll get I'll get there when I get there. So I think that putting this guy here. Nine oh four. Who's that? I've never seen that symbol. Oh, 
hook on me? Fucker. <laughs> well, in all honesty, this guy makes for a really great dude. I don't want to search for a position. I want to assign a position. Okay. I mean, I could put him back on, but he was terrible to begin with. <clears throat> so we'll put him on. He doesn't like me, but we'll fix this. I'm going to send him a gift. Yeah, that'll kind of smooth things over quicker. And we'll sway him because he's our... He's our evil guy. Managed domain. That should help us out with that. The steward. So, this guy was the steward. And this is why he's kind of a little pissed off at me. Wants a seat on the council. Chancellor. Patient focus, huh? Well, that guy probably going to be terrible. Cousin and vassal. Well, he's 26 and he's majesty focus. So he's going to get better at what he's doing. I think I smooth, smooth over these lands. That guy will get better at what he's doing. Domestic affairs for now. The marshal... <clears throat> he's 46, he's 55, he's 55. Here we go with the younger guy. This is succession, Tyler, yeah. This guy's the better option, but this guy's got better progression. He's domain focused, so he's so my point is here, he's 46 years old and he has 20 stewardship. He is 34 years old with 15 stewardship, and his duty focus is almost an architect. So he will progress probably a little bit nicer, although you know it is worth noting, this guy has got Midas touched. What do you guys think? Which, who should take over as steward? Yeah, I just died too, man. Like, no warning. Dead. The younger? I can I agree with you there, Revenger? He's also, he's also a powerful vassal, so he wants to be on the council. Do that. We've got some minor titles here. Jesus, look at this guy, dude. Four fifty two learning. I'm sorry, 41 learning? Yeah, he's going to be it. I can't make him. No, I can't make him. We can't make vassals of the dude. Earl of Cheshire will go here. Or champion stays there. Minor titles are a uh, mod that I've got active right now. So we need to start determine too our lifestyle focus. 
do we go i, I kind of want to go with chivalry and see if we can get the chivalry uh thing to get a horse because i've never done it um it fits everything for him so i think this will be our our uh, uh warrior king that helps expand the rest of scotland Got genius kids all the way around, which is great. Probably got another... Uh... <clears throat> Oof, Herculean. That's great. I don't know. I don't know what the horse does. I've never really done it. Eric, we're using um, mods, so it's the closest thing we can get. Easy way to die? Well, I mean, yeah, we're brave, but I'm leading the forces, not fighting them. So let's go close. He's got the Western armor, which is always kind of okay, I guess. Ooh, look at that plate, though. I know plate isn't really a, a convention this early, but it's sick. Look at that. Look at that. That one's sick. The step nobility, high nobility. Oh, it's very early for plate. <laughs> Indian armor is probably one of my favorite looking armors, too. No, we can't use, we can't, we unfortunately cannot get achievements. be cool if there was a helmet. Oh, that's kind of nice. I like that. If there was a helmet with a crown on it. Oh, look at that. Look at that bassinet. Hargony's dragon clown. Crown. Aragonese dragon helm. Look at—he's got a dragon on top of his helmet. Look! 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 Oh, he's got a dragon on top of his helmet. Man, this—this this is the community flavor pack that adds all these really cool ones. Roman, that's sick. There's so many just cool additions with this flavor pack guys like if you don't have this flavor pack get it a dazzling crown an opulent crown nasal pearl circlet look at that look at that oh there it is crowned top helm <laughs> that is sick
Yeah, you can, Blake. You can do this. This is just the full screen barbershop. It's either the male male quaff circlet or this one. I mean, the crown helmet is sick, but full helmets were a twelve hundreds thing. So we would probably do something more. This this is more accurate. What's up, Vitze? Oh, I didn't apply those changes? Ugh. And we are in 899, so this, this fits. This plays. So, let's take a look at our wars here, too. Cannot change the coat of arms. Oh, let's go Marshall, uh, chivalry focus, please. Raid speed and supply capacity. Supply capacity is actually huge. I can't change the coat of arms. Reduces the risk of commanding armies. We actually, we're actually going to need that. We're, ooh, natural dread, ooh, natural dread is nice. We'll get there. But we need, we actually really need that. Since we are brave. And we are already attacking this sit settlement. That's going to happen there. Dangerous factions. So we're going to definitely have to, we're definitely going to deal with like an insurrectionist faction that's going to want independence. Um, I should actually start... Peter's back at the court as a physician. We're above our domain limit. We nominated a successor. And my son. We'll have to deal with that in time. Back to him, I'm sorry. Happening. He was back to zero, which is good. <clears throat> In fact, unpausing, repausing. Why don't you like me? Short reign, that's fine. Not my full liege, bullshit. Many duchies, we'll fix that. Foreign culture group, well, that's your problem. Zealous. Uh, you need, maybe you need to be like wiped off the map. This guy doesn't like me, of course. Most people are now terrified of me, too, because I have really high dread. My, my father was weak. I am not.
Oh, it's getting more and more. I have another daughter! Good Scott's name. Shona. So, the daughters actually give me some pretty good options to create alliances. I can imprison him? Why? Let's have you try and discover a secret. I don't like this guy. Thirty-five percent chance, damn, dude. Targets by measures disrupting schemes. Hmm. Nothing I can marry for him. Yeah, all of his sons are married. We do need to give away a domain, it looks like. Dumberton. How are you? How are you, Carrick? You don't like me either, huh? You're intimidated by me. Good to know. Oh, we have to get rid of our, our duchies, too. So, this is our cupbearer, and this is just a vassal. Okay. So, let's make this guy, then. Yeah, we'll make this guy the duke. He'll be the duke of the isles. And that will release the issue with um, my duchies having having too many duchies. And this guy's really good. He's a great intrigue. He's got great um, diplomacy. So I think I mean, we will we will lose this guy because it's going to transfer him, and it's unfortunate. But I think this is the right call. <clears throat> We'll get to Ireland. We'll definitely get to Ireland, Ben. We're just going to get Mercia first. No, we won't give Isles to the Sun. We can give Mercia to a Sun OS. I've got to get rid of Dumberton, but I don't want to give it to this guy. I don't want to empower him. Just as much as I don't want to give it to this guy and empower him. What is this? I guess it's my army. Oh, it's the one that's sieging. That's right. These guys are fighting. It's not that we didn't give away a domain yet, Guinness. We only gave away a title. So I don't want to give away St. Johnston. Because that is the ducal land there. But Dumberton is the capital of Strathclyde, and I'd rather grant it to a better... someone who likes me. <laughs> my son. Okay, my best friend here. Dude, my best friend's actually pretty solid. Pictish and Fortune. Anyone Scott? Ronald the Gardener. Diligent, patient, and just. I think he's a good call. Because I'm trying to spread Scott Scottish influence. Duncan's not bad. Compassionate. He's a mastermind philosopher. He's got 20 WAP and learning. I think this guy's actually a better call because this dude 
is kind of on his way out. I mean, he's, he's old. He's 52. He's fine. Best friend has huge bonus to missions at fill bars. Uh, what do you mean, Victoru? Help me out, my bro. And this would go far. This would go away to converting Cumbria. Top Legion's culture is Scott. That's good. Well, I'm the top lead. Why did I? I'm stupid. <laughs> So it's either Duncan here, which gives us a nice 20 learning dude into the into the mix. And we can still use Duncan down south, too. So it's not like he's not completely gone. He's not completely out of use. This just puts a probably a stronger guy at my back. Who are you being tutored by? Your mom. Good. The mom's your mom's a good tutor. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, pig. Yeah, I get. I mean, that's not really the best, but all right, whatever. Oh, ask. Stop, please. I'll, I'll put people as dukes where I want to put them. I, I understand you want a uh, succession war, but I don't. <laughs> that is stressful for me, and I don't want to play a game in a stressful way. And assign him to convert or change culture or something. He gets a massive boost to whatever he assigns you. Interesting, Victoru. Victoru. I did not realize that. But I don't think I'd replace my current steward. Although I could. Well. Hmm. I'm not sure. We'll figure it out when we get there. I kind of just like to play it by ear like that. It's it's a little bit more fun. I mean, not inherit titles, huh? Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. We'll found his own dynasty too. Pretty good. So you're saying replace this guy with my friend? It's a mod, Hotshot. It's a mod. They did not, Victoro, but hopefully we'll get some information soon. They said that we would be getting info at the beginning of the year. Alright, we are now the dynasty head of this guy. I don't know who that guy is. Maybe the head of the Scots, which is good. We're finishing Banus Anus.
gonna follow these guys. We'll try to go feudal. I don't know if we'll be able to do it today. Mm-hmm. He put himself as Marshall. They always put themselves as Marshall. It's the best, it's, it's his best skill, so. <sighs> I mean, it is what it is. It's not that, it's not that far off. And at least he's on his way out, so I'll allow it for now. <laughs> so this faction's getting a lot of girth here. Who are we working on? Dryston. Okay, is he in this faction? Is he in this thing? He is not. So we should probably work on swaying one of them instead. He's actually getting better and better with me. Um, yeah, we should work on swaying. Gift. 25 gold, try and buy him off that. Him a gift. gift. Yeah, we bought the cheap one. Yeah, where's my marshal? Ah! See, it's too bad that this didn't happen when I was alive, because I could have used that strong hook to create a uh, an alliance. But, this is a better outcome. <laughs> Alright, took the Petty King's son, we just, we just, there we go, we got this. Wife pregnant, which is good. Fight here and fight there. Try and kill these guys and get more prisoners. Perfect. The knight. Oh, well, it, it appears I have Wolfgar, the knight. <clears throat> Wolfgar, welcome to my realm. You'll find that I am, in fact, not a hospitable king. This little tiny sun. So which one? Okay, so that is... How much is he worth? Oh, that's not going to be good for you, buddy. Nor you, man. I think a little bit more dread would go further. We've already killed one kid, why not another? But do both of them contribute? Oh, we're gonna peace out all right. But not before we... This guy's gonna be a little bit of a, this kid, this kid is the one. So this is the one that gives us the 50% war score. Victoru. This is just another kid. And this will help me stabilize. Benjamin, thank you very much, man. 
you're not you're still you're you're all fine with this huh i'm gonna you're fools so this is very like typical of what we were talking about with scottish history right where okay the, the celtic lords kind of try to rise up well you and you we have created our terror now we will make our peace champions that we definitely don't have that why is that there we go I would love that if we could do like a crusade oh I should have finished sieging this well disband all of our armies and we should be over, but that's fine. Because we will... So we we now have this guy. Or this lady. This gentleman. And see, we killed this guy, so... <clears throat> oh, this is actually... He's kind of scary. He's a scary vassal. Him. Man, he's got a lot of scary vassals in here, man. This little tiny child. And her. The little tiny child, though. Let us offer... no. Guardianship. I would like to be the guardian, but fine, I suppose not. I will give it to Clementia. Although Clementia would be a really nice... Where's that culture? Done. No, I don't want to become Freconian, never mind. Anyone is Scott. Damn, what about my the guy, like my new guy? My mom is Swabian, unfortunately. I'll have Peter do it. Anglo-Saxon's fine. Unfortunately, I can't be the Guardian, which would give me the benefit here. Now, Warwick, we will grant again to a culture, Scott, to this guy. To Duncan here. Because he's compassionate, which will be really good. Now, I can grant... I mean, I could make my son the Duke of Mercia. Oh, and let's also usurp that title from you, buddy. 250, done. He is now just a petty duke, or a petty, uh, petty bro. And this is its own. Bedenford is its own thingy now. Bedenford will get absorbed by Wessex, because that they do your want that, t that land. Um, so Warwick... Warwick. Shift Q. Deria has got a duke. Lancaster does not have a duke yet. Are these guys on my side at all, though? Yet. Hmm, interesting. So, that will empower him. These three. With Umbria. What's Frankie own? What land? Uh, this is, this is, uh, uh, them. So East Essex will basically take this over. They'll want Bedford for themselves. I don't think I can... Yeah, I can't. But if I empower Lancaster 
See, this guy is against me right now. Yes, correct. Uh, Victoru. 100. Get some opinion of me. We need to give away lands no matter what. And if I give... I'm thinking we'll give Warwick and Northampton here to, Don to Duncan. And Duncan will then get the High Chieftain of Mercia. And that will greatly empower him. <clears throat> and all the vassals that just transferred over, which are kind of an issue, won't be an issue. This doesn't like me, doesn't like me, doesn't like me, doesn't like me, and doesn't like me. We will have to worry about our development. We have to get our development up to five to do, uh, to get to, so we, we need 51 more. But we can raid our way into higher development, which is kind of cool, right? Yeah, if we create a duke down here, that duke will have to then deal with these lands. And these lands all don't have... I mean, they've got some. But I can join his war if there is an issue. So what we'll do is grant to Duncan Brian McCullen of Scotland. He's going to be good too. Brave, charming, cynical. But this will increase our presence of Scots. Which is good. He's ambitious. So that's kind of scary, but I think we'll be okay. And he's going to love me. So we got another super strong, super devout uh, guy down south now. Because our northern dude, Moray, is not my fan. And what I could do is take out these two islands... And what, who's at war with? Lordship of Gwent. I would love a 100 Years War DLC, man. That'd be really cool, OS. I should probably take these islands out sooner rather than later. Because if I do, I can create like a, a Duke of the Northern Isles, which is kind of cool. Derby should get absorbed by Lancaster, but Lancaster doesn't have a reliable character yet. So, I mean, I can make this. This guy would make a very good uh, duke, but he's on this independence faction. And if I make him a duke now, he could leave the independence faction. And the good thing about him being in this independence faction is this guy is as well. So if I make him the duke, it should make only one person here. And by me making him a duke, it should actually hopefully um, remove him from this independence. Let's let's test it. Let's see how that works. To kind of show you that theory in motion. We should have the money to do so. Okay. Titles can be created. Let's create the Duke of Lancaster. Then we will give this to Darby. Okay, thank you very much, Chops. Flunson, what's up, man? Who would make a better ruler, to be honest, though? He's compassionate, gregarious, and brave. He is humble, wrathful, and brave. He's also a patriarch. He's 47 versus this guy being 46. He's a former, uh, <clears throat> a former, what's it called? Peasant leader. <laughs> oh, it's here. Here you go, YouTube. That's her YouTube user. Welcome, 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 dude. I think we give it to this guy. This guy's a little too pissed. The other dude's a little too pissed at us. So, grant title. Lancaster. <clears throat> yeah, so that'll, that'll lose a lot of discontent.
but he should hopefully leave this now. Unless he's been hooked into being there, which is definitely a thing. Champion practice. The clanging of mail and the clashing of swords rings in my ears as my champions practice their arms. I study them intently, trying to ascertain each one's particular strength and weaknesses. There can be little rest for them, for as soon as the bell is rung the signal, uh, to signal the end of the mock melee, the stable doors are opened. It is time to bring out the mounts. Today we are going to go field riding, or bring me armor. I haven't ridden on, I haven't ridden on the Quintain in ages. Quintain. Alpha small boost or a martial lifestyle perk. Is does one of these lead to the horse more so than the other? Thank you for the donation. Have have the dukes make the square. Make the square and we shall fight. So, uh, which one are you saying, OS? Which one is most likely to, to, to do the horse interaction? Is it this one? What, what, what is that? The mount will give way to that. Is it at today we'll go field riding, or is this I haven't ridden on the Quintain in ages? This one you're saying? The mounted exercise? This leads to the, the horse? <clears throat> I'm gonna get some water here real quick, guys. I'll be right back and get some water.
Alright guys, let me pop a window open over here. It's hot as fuck. I woke up and it was like freezing. And now, it is not. Okay. Okay, so let's do uh, mounted exercises. Yeah, I bought Kingdom Come Deliverance too. I'm really excited to really play it more. Can you tell me anything about CK3 that'll make it seem like I know my stuff? Um, I don't... Ooh. It is definitely turmeric and ginger. Well, I didn't know that was going. Oopsies. So this is losing more and more, so that's kind of nice. Uh, as, as well, Va Vaspia. Cheeky bastard. Look at Scotland, man. Look how far south we've gone. Right into the, right into the doorstep of Wessex. Mm. I don't like how big this has gotten. Denmark is really chunking into this. But that's okay. They might be our next, they might be our next target. Ulster is pretty huge, actually. So if we do, yeah, Uplands down here, they've gotten bigger. <clears throat> they won that war, fortunately. So we need to take these guys out. Yeah, but so I, I was watching uh, what's his name, <clears throat> Surreal Beliefs, and I'm like, man, I want to try this. It's on sale, so I bought Kingdom Come Deliverance, and I might do late night streams of that. I might do a late night stream of it tonight if you guys want to just watch me play through and learn. Yeah, just, just Mac. If you want to, so if you want people to think you know what you're talking about with Sir Kings, just say, yeah. Well, you know, uh, Dior. That's part of the Duchy of uh, of Ormond. Is that not, not a big deal? Not a big deal. Yeah, if you guys want to watch, I'll I'll do a late night stream of it. But I got to work on this. I'm doing a script for Cathay. Uh, Ian Bruce, Valheim. Valheim's when I play, uh... I play, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla a ton right now. I play MTG Arena all the time. I play Hunt Showdown with Indy almost every night. I play Call of Duty Cold War every weekend with my buddy. I, you know, what's unfortunate is I love Crusader Kings 3, but I don't play it on my own. Not anymore. Bannerlord is another good example. When lockdown started, dudes, I was playing Bannerlord until 2 or 3 in the morning every night. And then I'd wake up and I'd make a video because I was just so stoked on the game. And I, I love Crusader Kings 3 as well. But I don't play Bannerlord for fun anymore because I think we're all kind of waiting for big patches. So... <laughs> Yeah, Odyssey, Odyssey and Valhalla are my two favorites of recent. Um, Valheim, uh, Turn, and I are playing together. Okay, let me do this. So it's either going to be, do we take out East Anglia? Or, yeah, I'm really stoked to play more Kingdom Come. So if you guys want to watch me tonight, I'll play it. 
OS, I don't know enough about Kingdom Come to answer that question. I think the next game I'm excited for that I'm going to cover on the channel is... Um, <sighs> Darkest Dungeon 2. I can subjugate her. I don't know what I do here. I don't know if I go and attack uh, Yoland first. Maybe I could do. I could declare war here and just take uh, the Duchy of Munster because it's a larger duchy, or Connacht because it's connected to me. I did play the Witcher games. Or I take uh, Hordeland up here, Hordeland up here. What do you guys think? Should we, I mean, I can subjugate her. Uh, subjugate, I can only do one subjugation though. I thought you could only do one subjugate. Yeah, oh, it's only one. One invasion. Yeah, I can go grab this. I can do multiple wars. Uh, I won't OS. I own Oriole here, so I have a I have a staging point. I could just do a bunch right now. No, Essex will leave B. Wessex, I kind of want to do its own thing. Yeah, I don't want this to get bigger and bigger and bigger. I think we have to curtail this. Okay, so let's do that. Let's do... I mean... Dublin. Ormond's going to fall, unfortunately. Oh, she's a child, dude. Thank you for the donation. Pierre of Monte Cristo says, Have you ever visited Scotland? I have traveled to many places, but Scotland is my favorite place on earth. Love hiking the Cairngorms. I have not, man. Um, the only places I've ever been in my life are... Uh, outside of California are Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, Seattle, Washington, and um, both London and Horsham, England. Well, she would be like another wife. Because remember, I can have multiple spouses. He's the superest of chads. <laughs> But, okay, but does marrying her actually get those lands? Let's, let's, let's test that. I've never, I've actually never done a situation like this. I thought she retains autonomy. Let's just take a look. Yeah. So we get a claim. I wonder if it... Well, I just wanted to see how that worked. Yeah, they'll get in implicit claims. That's right.
I mean, I could just join this war. Or, or... No, let's just, let's eat these two really quick. And I think I'm bold enough to just go... Okay, here. Okay, that, this guy's got 174, eight, yeah, so we'll do this. Why can't I do it? Oh, an illustrious. Do that. On the county. Or maybe actually we'll do a conquer. Or a holy war. Oh, it does cost piety though. But it builds our piety, which is good. You gain for the devotion. Gain 100. This... It's, there's no reason not to do a holy war. Let's try that. I've never tried a two prong two prong war like this. Oh, I didn't realize that was like that. Well, it's not a big deal. Okay, so I will go here. You will go here. Oh. <laughs> there's, uh... There's that. <laughs> well, bam He's, he's a pagan. He must be dealt with. Send the peasant revolt. Oh. Oh. I am a man who beheads people. I'm sitting around the camp table with Mortimer Ao... Aokade? Aoshade? Aoshid? Oh, yeah, we're definitely doing this one. <laughs> uh, Aok bangs his fist on the table and loudly proclaims that we should charge the enemy directly and crush them with the sheer might of our armies, while Strucker nervously mutters about how we should avoid unnecessary engagement and fight a war of attrition. Yeah, two prong war. Maybe a. It's, the two prong war was like a plastic fork, it broke as soon as I stabbed something, so it's fine. Oh, they get an opinion of me if I do that, though, right? Out of curiosity, is any of them, are any of them in this? No. They're not. So let's do... Yeah, just double it up. Employ both strategies, my bros. Oh, you're bringing a little army. So let's do this. Reorganize. Um, Raps yell, I have got a, uh, 
I've got a uh, chainmail quaff downstairs, and it does. Your beard does get caught in that very, very, very easily. <clears throat> it it is annoying. Oh, you're coming all the way around, huh? Seven nights, huh? Well, actually, stay with me. We'll wait for him to make landfall. Because this is not really going to do anything. It's only 300 soldiers. Finish that war. You know what I do to prisoners that aren't worthy, do you? Well... Cumbrian Catholic? Sorry, right, man. I got a rule. You double-cross me. You get put in the grinder. We are... We are a tyrant. <laughs> Uh, Matt, what's up, man? I am. I have not played any 40k recently at all, though, with, uh, COVID and what have you, so. It's just been a slow war of attrition. I'm waiting it all out, my dude. My son! You know who, you know what this son, you know what this son's gonna be named? Gotta make sure I get the spelling right, so hold on. I just want to make sure. I couldn't remember if it was one or two two G's. And dude, he's a genius. Of course, Piglet would be uh, a a genius. Piglet the Spender. <laughs> Gabriel Ecthelion. <laughs> That's a pretty sick name. And we're gonna win this fight like no one's biz. And that puts an end to that war, too. So now we control the northern portion of Scotland, which is or, uh, uh, Ireland, which is good. Um, but I honestly, I just want to roll this into another war. Like we got to keep this momentum up. The Ulster, Connacht. And so let's look at Scott's culture and adult male, not a ruler. Well, I'm either going to make this guy. Well, we can't take Ulster yet, because Ulster is part of Upland. But we are more primed to get the Duke or the Duchy of Connacht. So, because Upland is still decently strong with a lot of allies. 
They're in this war. As an ally. Are you going to conquer all of Europe later? Uh, Kyle, probably not. Uh, we're probably just going to... We're going to create Britannia, and that'll be the probably the end of the campaign. And we'll move on to uh, either... Uh, I want to do a campaign over here, for sure. Abbasids, look at them. That's, that is... The Tulinids are getting all over the place. Tulinids have fractured. Byzantines and... Oh, man, Bulgaria is... Thick. Lothrongria... Uh, absorbed a lot of East Francia. Aquitaine made its own kingdom. Lothrongia took out Italy. And East, Angl or East Francia just completely splintered. Casaria is in, up in uh, flames yet again. Russia's growing to the east, uh, the Rurikids. Uh, this is Grimnir, his son. At at 46, not that old. We have not done any building yet. Tihara is getting big. Berg's County. Yes, Asturias is. Uh, Expanding pretty well, too. Pushing back the Umayyads. Very interesting. Uh, the Outremer Empire. I can actually do that. So we could take ooh, what's good? East Icelandic Conquest of the Chiefs of, of uh, Westerland. We care about that. I kind of want to go up there and take that out too, though. But we could eat this up too. You know, I mean, we could do, and hmm, oh, that would put me at war with them. I don't want to do that. Oh, we'll conquer Iceland. Don't worry. We'll go up north. But we could go take down uh, Osiri, too. And that would put... That's Leinster. That's a duchy right there. And if we do that, we can, I think... So that's five... Yeah, that's five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if we did that, and it would make ourselves king of Ireland. Sporked approach. Right, isn't that cool, Roland Day? Where you start as like Nuestria and you create the Norman, uh, uh, what's it called? Culture. That's all French. Okay, 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 okay. We still have Northumbria to create, but I'd like to make... I, well... Oh, this guy's a good vassal. Why do I have an that? <laughs> I should... Well, I could grant... I could grant that to the... Uh, a, a duke... And make that the Duke of uh, Strathclyde. In fact, where are you, Mormer? So if I make someone the Duke of Albany, which my son will be, the, my son will be the Duke of Albany, more than likely. Um, I mean, I'm so young though, it's hard to want to land a son. 
I, more often, I bet you Piglet would probably be our heir. In fact, I should educate Piglet. Your daughter and ward, your daughter and ward. Damn. Well, we could drop her. My wife, actually my wife... Yeah, let's remove that guardian. And she will educate my son. Because she has got good fortune building. She's not the best learning, though. This guy could actually be really good tutor. Content, paranoid, though, and forgiving could possibly pass on. No, no. Fickle, content, and impatient. The Midas Touch dude? I could have him do it. Tax collector. Die? Your vassal land best friend. Yeah, we'll do this. We'll see if this works. Perfect, yeah. Mastermind Philosopher. I mean, I don't think... Well, this guy can do it. Midas touched. But he's he's shy and trusting, and that's dangerous. We don't want that to, to, to go on. Ephrus would bring zealous, generous, and lustful. Stafford would bring calm, vicious. Uh, David, where do you see those blue dots? All swine. This guy's kind of nice. Trusting, calm, and giving content and paranoid. Paranoid's not good. Be honest here. Yeah, I think this is probably one of the better bets, though. There's no... There's... I mean, there's no guarantee my son becomes paranoid. What's up, Hugh Ged? How are you doing, man? Well, do we do this? Do we go with the, this guy to have him teach my son? Again, paranoid might transfer down to my son, so. What do you guys think? I mean, he should be a bomb teacher. Let's do it. Let's kind of see how it goes, I think. 
He's amazing learning, right? 44, he's got the Mastermind Philosopher, he's got Scholar. I mean, these are the two things that are important. So my kid should come out like a fucking genius. Well, let's kind of we'll save. See how it goes. All right, man. Have a good one, dude. I can create the Duchy of Ulster. What's up, John Kane? Ooh, this guy's got a claim to the Kingdom of uh, Ireland. Maybe I just let him do his thing. <laughs> what up, man dead? Content, yeah, maybe this goes with this guy. We'll convert him. There we go. Need him to convert to Insular. Okay, so. Um, do we declare war here and just take this up and just kind of continue our... Uh... There is a Hadrian's Wall. It's right here. And you get... It's a special building, too. So I can actually assemble this. Like I can make like hill forts here. It's pretty cool. Cuz they are a feudal government. So I think we take this out. Or actually, you know what we should do? Cool. Okay, so they're trying to take Dublin. I... well... 
No, we should do this. Let's do this. Because their next target's going to be here. And they're going to be on a peace treaty with Ormond. So then we can take Ormond after that. Declare war. Oh, we can... Oh, damn it. Why not? Illustrious. Oh, we're so far away. <sighs> Fair war. County. Ormond. And just do that. Well, if we attack Dublin, then it pulls them into the war once I win. And I don't want to do it. Uh, because then we're on a peace sheet with them and I can't take Ormond. So if I do this... It'll be worth it. Host a feast? Good, actually. Oh, good call. I could do raids over here in Connacht. And raided. Three. Fifteen. Six and fifteen. Yeah, I could do these quick raids. That's actually not a bad not a bad call at all. Darby wants an alliance with me? No. I'm just going to take you over in a bit. Four more years? I'll have someone... Like, these guys... I'm surprised Lancaster hasn't smashed you out, man. I'm sorry, Darren. I'm just ripping and gripping over here, brother. Uh-oh. I didn't get a chance to swap that guy's commander out. Oh, please. Oof. I can. I can. I can actually do that. I'm actually going to swap this dude for him so he can raid quicker over there. I'm on the conquest of Dublin. Okay, yeah. So, Oh man, Benjamin! I've watched almost all your CK3 videos. Keep up with the good content. I've recently got a gig with HBO, so let me pay it forward. Benjamin, thank you very much, man. And congratulations on the gig. Largest donation of the day from Big Daddy Benjamin Franz Blau. Thank you very, very much, man. That's very, very generous of you, dude. Very much appreciate that. What? What? Uh, oh! Smallpox. Isolate. Isolate them, please. What, uh, where'd you get your gig in? Acting, or is it in, um... In tech work. The fine art of tech. We'll sway him now. What are you gonna him do? Uh, maybe we'll sway him. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. Love you too, man. Love you too, brother. Oh ho! Well, that's a pretty wild one. Well, I didn't mean to get in a fight here, but.
Guy seems pretty good. Don't want to jump my forces into that just yet. Ah, we took a courtier, huh? Aha! Crushing and Russian people over here. Oh no! Oh, alliance expired. That's okay. Oh, Fire Mine Kingdom come barely in it at all. <laughs> ah, we are safe from the smallpox. A war horse. Oh, okay, 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 okay. As I inspect the stables, my gaze is drawn to a mare kept away from all the others. She throws her head and stomps her hooves. Displaying her powerful hindquarters and well-arched neck. This creature has the best com confirmations and the worst of tempers. The best of confirmations and the worst of tempers. I have never seen such a war horse before, but the stable master insists that she is impossible to train. Okay, horse might become your new steed. Such a fine steed will fetch a hefty price. Experienced stable master. Whoa, that's pretty sweet. Alright, let's see if we can do it. Right, this is the one we gotta choose. Uh, obviously, I mean, the horse might become your new steed. Let me see if I can put her. I don't know if this helps, but I'm assuming it does. So let's see. I want to back away from a challenge. I should do it. Aha. Uh -huh. The horse pins her ears back as I approach. Her disregard from her disregard for me crystal clear. This first meeting is important to earn her trust and respect, and I need to decide how to go about it. it Could work well with a high prowess skill or a bold personality. Well, we definitely have got brave and we have 23 uh uh prowess. I am gentle, move slowly. This is a high diplomacy skill, which we do not have. And then high intrigue skill, which we don't have. So let's go with a steady hand, because the other ones we just don't have. It is a mighty feeling. The powerful horse follows my every whim. Now that I have earned her trust, she seems almost fond of me. I'll keep her, keep her as my personal war horse. This is rewarding. I'll do it again. Tamer of horses. That's really cool. The personal war horse will give me plus two prestige, point two prestige per month. That is thick. What are you talking about, Ovas? Oh shit, Ken, are you okay, man? Well, we're 
doing it. Horse can die in battle. <gasps> Whoa! Admiring the mare that now follows my every command, I must I muse upon what to call her. A name inspired by history. Mythology is full of awe-inspiring horse names. It's just a horse, and it should be named as much. Mm. Mythology or history? I'm thinking mythology, right? So we got two for history and two for mythology, three for mythology. Look, Richard, what's up, man? And been, oh man. Well, Ken, I'm I'm glad to hear you're okay, dude. Very glad to hear you're okay. We we're three for three, or five for. Uh, so four to five, four to six. So what, Un unveiled men? We're having fun, dude. Four to six, five to six, six to six, seven to six, eight to six, eight to seven. Okay, so let's just do it like this. Since you guys, this seems to be a pretty split one, so we'll do a poll on it. Uh, how do we name the horse? History or mythology? So the way you're gonna do, I'm gonna press start, and then you're gonna uh, type in exclamation point vote space zero for history or exclamation point Vote space uh, myth one for mythology. So just like this, I press start, take it the way I do it. There you go. That's how you're going to vote for mythology. Oh, oh, okay, Unveiled Men. <laughs> Sorry. I was like, damn, man, I'm just trying to have some fun with the horse. <laughs> David, thank you very much, man. Dropping a four Canadian donation, my brother. With a little cup of cough. A cup of joe. We're coming up to around the end of the stream here, too, guys. I just realized what time it is. Damn. How are we doing here? Um, oh, I didn't use a timer. Shit. So we're 12 to 17. Mythology's winning five ahead of, of history here. Uh, coming into the first half, bottom of the ninth, which is not the first half. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Thank you very much, David. I really appreciate it, dude. Thirteen, seventeen. The uh, Penguins are down three games in the series. <clears throat> I used to do a lot of Bob Menery impressions, but then like I got sick of watching that guy. So, oh, you weren't hard locked into either decision. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like uh, looks like mythology is one. So let's take a look at mythology. The mythological world is rich in grandeur and horses. So. Lamre, the after the horse of King Arthur. Oh, oof. Balius, one of Achilles' own. Xanthos, the name of Achilles' other horse, would fit better. Boreas, the ancient Greek god of the North Wind. Hmm, another theme of the name would fit better. Name inspired by history, just to see. Tenkender, a as King Charlemagne's horse. 
Bucephalus, which is Alexander the Great's horse. Sanian, the fate of Naeseus. Elias. Red hair. Oh, Lou Boo's horse. Damn. Yeah, King Arthur's horse is where I'm like definitely going. Uh, yeah, King Arthur horse is, is fits. We're going to be the King of Britannia. King Arthur. It fits. It fits me. It fits me. It fits me. Not endorsed by my bishop. Why? Foreign culture group. What the fuck? What's wrong with the High Almoner? He's insular. Oh, Dr. Vassalpine is plus 21 because of him. Damn, he's so good at that. <laughs> Here's a gift. Okay, so we're moving back into our own territory. We got some fame. Oh, you're fighting this little war here, huh? I don't know what you're doing. All right, disrupt the schemes, disrupt the schemes. We got another one here. Friendly Fatal Casualty minus 20%, that would be nice. Um, okay, so we will disband this. Disband this. And that is a good place for us to stop here for the day. We'll be back on Thursday with more of this live stream. I'm trying to knock out this video for Cathay. I've got a, a whole big um, army list video that I'm working on, guys. So if you're excited for Warhammer 3, you should really be excited for this Cathay video. I think it's going to be a lot of really awesome uh, information coming your way, hot and heavy. Jaden after me. But we, yeah, we might be doing a Kingdom Come Deliverance stream later tonight. Just have some fun while I play through it. Absolutely, Andrew. Thank you very much for watching. Yeah, I got that horse, finally. I've always wanted one. Let's go ahead and take a look at donations here today and make sure we give the just deserves. Uh, opening us up for the day was Big Daddy Surreal Beliefs with a $5 donation. David Daniluk with two four Canadian donations. Thank you very, very much, David. I actually don't think I mentioned your, your first one, so thank you a, a double this time. A YouTube user914 with a $2 donation saying, Have the Dukes make the square. Pierre of Monte Cristo with a 5 euro donation. And then Benjamin Franzblau with the largest donation of the day at a whopping $20. Thank you very, very, very much, Benjamin. Oh, Revengers sneaking in a 20 uh, Norwegian Kronu and then Benjamin dropping an additional $10 on me. Thank you guys very much. We got up to a total of. $51 today. Damn, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for the donation. As you know, this is my full-time job, so I like I can't express enough how much these mean to me. So thank you very, very much. It's very generous of you guys. I remember OS. I remember, brother. Let's go ahead and save this. Absolutely, and thank you very much for watching. And if for all of you guys heading out, please make sure you stay safe, wash your hands, stay away. Hopefully we'll be done with this shit soon. Um, but we'll be back from... Yeah, another sneaker from Ben there, right? Just kind of dropped it in on me. We'll be back on Thursday to conquer more of the lands of Britannia. And we're getting really close here. Like, we can almost declare ourselves the uh, Empire, the Emperor of Britannia. We are 19 counties away. So if you think about it, if we take Ireland, which we're not too far from, I think next we'll take us. What, so what is, what's going on over here? Is he just in a... This guy wants that. That's good. That'll weaken them both. Uh, read what out? My mask can't work. 
Oh, and also, yeah, pff, totally forgot, too. We got um, two new members, David B. and Benjamin. Of course, Benjamin dropping plenty of donations here today, too. So double thank you to both of you gentlemen. Uh, ben, if you put a if you put a comment, it did not. There's no uh, there's no there's nothing for me to read out on that comment. It just says ten dollars. Yeah, I don't. It doesn't have any text attached to it. You guys don't see any text under his super chat, right? If you want to type it out right here, I can read it out. Yeah, I saw the HBO one. Again, a huge congrats to that, my brother. Oh, dude. Wessex just divided up. Uh-oh. I don't know how to pronounce that. Witchy? <laughs> and then Kent. Ho! Oh. Oh. Ho! Cornwall got beaten up too. Man. We have we have a fun next stream to do. Oh, let's see here. The HBO gig is the Gilded Age. I'm shooting a huge ballroom scene in the huge... Naragan Set Mansion, Rhode Island. I'll be playing one of the horn players in the orchestra. Well, fuck, dude, that's awesome. Can you actually can you actually play the horn, or is did they just cash you like, oh yeah, we're just gonna put you in the in the uh, um, we're just gonna put you in the the ensemble here, or do you actually play horn? The El Cid show you mentioned in Hispania stream was pretty good, season one, dude. James, that guy is amazing. Flashpoint history. He's so knowledgeable, and he, his wife is, I think she's Castilian Spanish, so he has the pronunciations down very well. It's really, really cool to watch him. I've watched a couple El Cid stuff, um, El Cid if you want to go with that, um, but very few people get uh, Campeador's, the pronunciation of all that stuff correctly, and he does a really good job of pronouncing everything both uh, Muslim and uh, Iberian very well. All right, guys. I will see you on Thursday. Thank you very much for watching here today. We have a really big stream on Thursday to knock all this out because there's so much fun to be had. But thank you all very much for watching here today. Have a good one. Wash your hands. Stay safe and take care.